Hello and welcome to the Daily Meal for Friday the 22nd of July 2022. There's a lot going on today's video so let's just jump straight into it. We finally have, now I was talking in yesterday's video about Meal TV. What's happening with that? What are the prices? What's what's going to happen? Well, they, they announced it today, didn't they? I don't know if they were watching with my video or whether I'm psyching and just figured it out. But we have meal tv package details announced from millwfc.co.uk meal tv streaming packages for the 22-23 season are now available supporters can now purchase annual and monthly packages for the new campaign four packages are available including an annual video subscription for international fans which is currently discounted to 140 pounds uh, secure yours before September to save thirty pounds. So it seems it's going to be going up to one hundred and seventy if you don't uh, if you dilly dally. Uh, audio passes are also available worldwide, providing commentary of all Millwall matches, and that's priced at forty five pounds. I've already bought mine. It seems to be the same price as the iFollow one because remember uh, earlier this month I told you uh, iFollow took the piss. They charged everyone because it was auto renewed so they just charged everyone on the friday and refunded the money on the monday and that was 45 pounds it seems to be the same price now it's going to get complicated now yeah due to sky sports broadcast agreements boo boo 3 p.m kickoffs on saturday afternoons will not that's in bold not be available to stream in the uk and ireland i'm pretty sure before wasn't ireland couldn't you watch games in Ireland before? Is that new? Uh, games outside of this time will be available to stream if they're not selected for live broadcast in the UK for £10 per match. Now there was a limit, I believe there was a limit set by the league before. You couldn't just move your games to the midweek and um, just show, show your games on the uh, online thing for £10 a match that would like you're circumventing the rules there you couldn't do that so they set a limit so I'm not sure if that's still in place but we're gonna find out um, so here you go look uh, these are the packages available you can pay for audio pass £4.50 um, you can pay for live video pass that monthly that's £25 and that's just if you're not in the UK and Ireland and Channel Islands, Isle of Man are included in UK and Ireland. You you can't watch that. And there is some other stuff going on. Um, we're going to look at the FAQs, which stands for Frequently Asked Questions. Who's asking these questions and why are they doing it so frequently? Well, let's figure it out. Uh, this is the page here. Welcome to me all TV. Well, thank you for watching us. Um, right, so here's the thing. If your problem is not answered below, please contact TV at streamamg.com. Is that the company that's running it, AMG? So they've, that might be, I, I don't know who they are, but that seems to be. Now here's the thing, this email address will become active from Wednesday the 27th, ahead of our opening match against Stoke City. So if you've got any problems before then, uh, tough shit, because you have to wait until the 27th before you email them to find out what... To get a solution to your problem so here we, it's going to get complicated now live video mill tv is the place to stream the lines matches uh, overseas supporters can watch any league game live that is not selected for broadcast by efs efl's overseas broadcast partners partners or sky sports so i think that's if uh, i don't know which countries are what but like if fox sports or espn if they show it in america and you're in america tough shit you can't you won't get the game you'll pay this is a problem um, a lot of fans had Leeds fans uh, had a couple of seasons ago and any fans or teams probably Norwich fans are going to get this season um, you, you're going to pay for a, a season long pass and you're going to find that certain games drop off and you thought you were paying for all of these games uh, 23 games or whatever or maybe more and it's like tough shit. No, that's not what you're getting. Um, you're getting less than that because the TV channels in your country, wherever you are in the world, have chosen to show Mill's game or whoever's game, and that's gonna that means you're blacked out. You can't 
you can't watch on Mill TV because they want you to watch the company that's paid all this money to the EFL to show that game in that country. So that's how it's going to be. Um, cup fixtures will not be live streamed via Mill TV unless advertised. Now this is the thing I follow. I, last season, Carabao Cup games were an I follow, were they not? Um, or there was a separate, there was an individual thing for Carabao Cup games, um, which they did. And I think they did that because the Premier League clubs don't have I follow. Will they be doing that again? Or maybe they will. Um, live vid audio. Our audio feed will be available worldwide for every single league match. Um, how to watch and listen. Log into your account and vis visit the match center to start watching. Uh, what games can I watch? Uh, in line with supporters return to stadia and EFL regulations, eligibility groups for live video streaming have changed. They've changed. I knew they've changed. I was pretty sure Ireland was was a. Uh, you could watch it from Ireland before. Uh, any any Irish fans watching this video, let me know. Is that the case? Could you watch I follow? Because it seems that if you could, they've changed in it. Uh, this as well. They've done this for some reason. So non televised Saturday 3 p.m. kickoffs and Friday and Saturday games. Friday and Sunday games. So any game that was on a Saturday, but it gets moved to a Friday or Sunday, that's, that means that's included as a weekend game. And it seems if we're in the UK, we can't watch these games now. So Millwall couldn't move their games to Friday nights and then show it on our, a Millwall TV to anyone who wanted to watch it. It seems that's not allowed because that still counts as a weekend game, even though the law as it stands means... It's only from 2.45 to 5.15 that the black off, blackout is. I, so I don't know what the hell is going on here. Uh, Channel Islands as well. Could you watch on eye following Channel Islands? Well, you, you can't now. You cannot now. It's, and then the Isle of Man. So you need to be outside of these areas. Scandinavia, France, um, Spain, if you're in Spain, Portugal. Um, Australia, I guess. If you're in any place outside of these areas, you can watch any game that isn't televised. Uh, Non-televised midweek games. Anywhere, where, where it says worldwide, that means anywhere in the world, which they should really say UK, because that's the ones where the UK people are interested. Televised games, not available. Any game selected for Sky or the Sky equivalent in your country, you're not allowed to, to watch it on your TV. You need to tune into to the to the television company to watch it. Like the Norwich game, we've got one game on Sky so far. The Norwich game Friday, on is it the 18th or 19th of August? In between the two fucking train strikes, that game isn't going to be on Sky. 8 p.m. kickoff, we have to watch it on Sky. It's just the way it is, or I'm just chore it. Fuck Sky. I would say don't chore from Millwall because this money goes to the club, and you've seen what the club have done with the money. They've bought all these fantastic players. Aren't you happy? Aren't you excited? If you want that to continue, pay for Mill TV, but chore Sky. Um, watch the stream for Sky. Audio commentary available worldwide. Again, wherever in the world, there's no restrictions on that for any every game. Uh, if there's not a pay-per-view match pass available in your territory for the game you want to watch, then it is not available. Now, which territories would not do that? I don't know. North Korea, China, China, China. Um, additionally, there is no season ticket holder access to streaming. So just having a season ticket does not give you a right to stream. What devices browsers can I watch on? Uh, Windows 8.1 to 10. Um, what about Windows 11? Uh, does anyone have Windows 11? Um, my thing said I'm, I'm uh, available for an update, but my fucking uh, computer's too old and it won't, it won't do it. And the recent versions of Mac OS. Um, latest versions of browsers, latest versions of Chrome, Firefox, Edge, Safari. Other browsers such as Internet Explorer. That's dead. No wonder that, that doesn't even work anymore, does it? Opera are not supported. Uh, can I watch on my mobile browser? 
Well, you've just said Safari. Safari is a mobile browser exclusively, isn't it? That's the iPhone browser, is it not? Uh, can I watch on my mobile browser? Users are advised against using a web browser to stream live matches on a mobile phone until the launch of the club's official new app. Uh, details on the new app will be released in due course. Well, I'll tell you what. I streamed uh, the Colchester game and the Amaby game on my phone. Apart from the fo the phone uh, being a, the screen being a bit small, uh, it worked fine. There were no problems. So, can you do two at once? Though that I don't think they mentioned that. Can I have it on my phone and on the web browser? Would that be possible? Probably not. Uh, can I watch the game on my smart TV or cast it to a connected device? Casting is prohibited by EFL regulations. Boo! Smart TV browsers are not supported but may work. Oh, well, take your chances. Uh, game consoles, Amazon Fire Sticks or other third party devices are also not supported. We are not held responsible if you experience issues with the streams on unsupported devices even if they have worked previously. So if you, if you try and use the service through these things and it don't work tough shit they've told you to use what it says here chrome firefox edge safari that's what you, they want you to use if you use it in, in any of these other ways you are screwed now i'll tell you what i do i bought this little thing it's a tiny little thing it's a, a complete rip off it cost me 50 quid uh from argos um you i plug it into my iphone then I put an HDMI cable into it, and then I put a charger into the the thing, and then I can put then this whatever's on my screen on my phone goes to my TV. So I'm casting it, but through a hard line. It's not um, Bluetooth and all that other fucking shit. Um, my feed is buffering. Good luck with that. Uh, I'm stuck in a log and loop. Great. Um, unauthorized uh, I received an unauthorized country when trying to watch the video now this is interesting this might catch a few of you out games are available in line with the geo restrictions above if you receive this message the game is not available in your country or territory but here's the thing if you are outside the UK on Olibobs on a holiday and trying to access the stream via mobile data 3G, who still uses 3G, 4G or 5G? Your IP address is still registered as being in the UK despite roaming due to the way roaming mobile services work. So if you're abroad on holiday, it's not going to work because it's going to think you're in the UK still because it's a UK SIM card, UK phone. You're going to have to... Don't know if you can switch the switch the SIM card out, or connect. It just says connect to a local Wi-Fi, and you, that will be fine. Um, I don't know about VPNs and all that stuff. That's uh, I'm a complete luddite when it comes to all that. Will Cup games be live streamed? FA Cup and Carabao Cup games are not available to watch live on Mill TV. Uh, you will be able to listen to all your team's matches. Oh, that's great. In the Carabao Cup via, via the normal subscriptions. Um, TV highlights of all Carabao Cup matches will be shown on ITV. Now last season, when the games were on Sky, Carabao Cup did game by game. You could um, pay for it and, and, and stream it on the special site that popped up. So I don't know if they'll be, still be doing that. Uh, can I watch a full match replay? Now this is the kicker. What's happening here? Full match replays will be made available to international supporters who purchase our annual live video pass. What's that about? Now last season, when I bought an audio pass for 45 quid, whatever it was, two days after the match, they would put up, they would put up videos, the highlights, and I would get that, because I was subscribed, they would get a normal, uh, and initial highlights then an extended highlights and then literally probably the monday night after a saturday game you would have a full match replay which was literally two and a half hours of just the camera from when the sprinklers were turned on you could hear the the ground music when the ground opened up until you could see like sometimes after when the players were like training down 
and that was really interesting to watch so it says here it's only that's only going to be available to international supporters well that's a kick in the fucking teeth i hope that's not uh, the case because um that's kind of annoying why don't uk and ireland fans have the same access as international supporters this is due to efl's existing broadcast agreement with sky sports yeah but why does that what is that about i know that about does that act, does that um affect the full match replay why will it do that i don't know um so this is what games can i live stream in the uk which games can we watch eight rounds of midweek fixtures will be available to view the dates of which are follows now they know what the fixtures are so why haven't they put them there i don't know other fixtures that are played outside of the article 48 block towers saturday 2:45 to 5:15, will be available on the discretion of the home club so if we get games moved but they said earlier friday and sunday games will be counted as a weekend game so that's not a midweek game so you can't move the game to friday or sunday maybe even a monday and have it count as a midweek game i think in order for it to be a midweek game it needs to be tuesday wednesday or thursday in that case if we get a game postponed or if like if there's a cup clash if a team's in the fa cup third round uh, from the fourth round onwards and the game has the league game has to be postponed then we're going to have a ga another game in mid midweek to catch up and that will be possibly made available depending if it's a home game or away game on the club that's at home so you you would think that Millwall now are on this system they would probably want to push midweek games because tickets don't really sell that well for midweek games they've already sold season tickets anyway so you would think they would tr probably want to try and capitalize and sell as many Millwall TV passes as they could so let's so we've got the dates here i don't know why they didn't put the um actual games up probably because if the 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 um they gets changed and the the game might not be on but we're gonna have a look and i'll go through and i'll tell you which games that you can live stream in the uk um this season as it stands right now the eight games that we're gonna get um so the 13th and 14th of september for some reason, I don't know why, there's a, there's a midweek game on the 16th of August against Swansea. That's midweek, why isn't that there? Did they miss that off? Now that's, it says here that's at the discretion of the home club. It's, have Swansea not said okay to that? But there's a game 16th of August, Tuesday, Sw <coughs> Swansea game, that's not on this list. Will that be on? And again, the Burnley game, Tuesday the 30th. That's not on there either. So what's happening there? What we're already being ripped off already. Um so that the first game there, 14th of September, is QPR at the den. That's gonna be on live stream. The next one is Rotherham away. So you don't have to go all the way to Rotherham. Don't worry about that. You don't have to travel there. It's fine. You can watch it live on Mill TV. On the 19th of October, that is Watford at the Den. Watford at the Den, that's going to be live streamed. Then we have the 2nd of November, which is Birmingham Away. So Birmingham Away as well on the live stream. Then we have at the end of the year, the last game of 2022. Bristol City at the Den. So if you're trying to save some money during the Christmas period, that game will be live streamed Thursday the 29th of December. Bristol City at the Den. If you've already bought your season ticket, it's fine. Doesn't matter. Um, <coughs> pardon me. If you've already bought your season ticket, that's included. But if you haven't and you want to save some money, uh, you can live stream that 29th of December at a den. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> so, moving on to 2023. 
we have Valentine's Day. So, Valentine's Day, commentary away. If you don't want to take your wife, your missus to that one for Valentine's Day, you can stay home and watch it for Valentine's Day. Get a nice uh, meal, bottle of red, sit in front of the TV and watch a uh, meal play away at Coventry. Why not? And then we move to March. The 14th of March is Swans at the Den, so that game will be televised. And then on the 18th of April, we have Birmingham at the Den. So this season, both Birmingham games are midweek. I assume that's to um, try and curtail any uh, trouble. And that both of, both of them are on streaming service this, this year. So like I said, we've got the eight games there. I thought last season it was restricted to eight games. But it says at the bottom, other, other fixtures will be made available at the discretion of the home club. So we have two games in August. 16th of August to Swansea, Tuesday. That's up to Swansea. So that, they said no. They don't want that on, on a live stream. And Burnley. Obviously Burnley are in the, in the shit. They, they're uh, financial trouble. Tuesday the 30th. Which that's, that's not on this list either. So there's two missing there. They might come on. Um, but we don't know. So we have to wait and see. And the live stream starts 15 minutes before kickoff. So there you go. Are you interested? Um, I've signed up to the audio, £45 for the season. Not bad. Um, I've paid for every game so far. I'm paying for the Ipswich game tomorrow. I hope to get to watch my, most of that. Um, should be a good one. So um, we finally get the details. The details around it's as usual with the i follow it's a bit um if you if you if you live abroad you you you're laughing here you get you get to watch the whole smorgasbord of of uh, millwall games and us mugs in the uk are getting short shrift but um what can you do it is what it is you deal the hand that gets played here uh so moving on now to uh contract news Billy Mitchell signed a new contract. Uh, Mill, this is from LondonNewsOnline.co.uk. Mill midfielder agrees a new long-term contract. Billy Mitchell has agreed a new long-term contract to Mill, the 21-year-old midfielder who came through the club's youth ranks is set to put pen on to paper over the weekend. Mitchell has made 71 senior appearances for the Lions, and in the 21-22 season, he became a first-team mainstay as he made 42 appearances in the championship, as well as featuring three of the club's cup ties as well. Those performances have earned Mitchell improved and extended terms. He last signed a deal in April 2021. At the time, Mitchell, a Lions fan, uh, a Lions fan told our paper, I feel like this club is going places and I want to be part of that. It's also having security, especially at a time like this, uh, when there are going to be a lot of players out of contract. It's nice to be able to plan ahead. Indeed. Uh, Millwall are also open to secure Danny McNamara on fresh terms. The right-sided defender has been subject to bids from Queen's Park Rangers and have been instantly rejected by South Londoners. Yeah, so what it seems is, um, to use an analogy to American football, is when they come through, they're still on rookie contracts, which means they don't get paid a lot. But now a good club like would say, actually, you're pretty decent. Uh, let's extend, extend your contract, uh, put a few more years on and give you a little pay, uh, pay increase because you've earned it. A bad club would say, you've signed the contract, fuck you. We're going to pay you two halfpennies and, and a threepence because that's what's in your contract. And we'll, we'll talk to you about a new contract when your contract's have got a year left to run. And if you don't sign, a, we'll make you, we'll, we'll offer you a pay rise then. And if you don't like it, we'll we'll sell you uh, and move you on because it's free money because we signed you from the youth team and that's that's what a bad club would do. And you can see me all here saying, yeah, we appreciate what you've done. You've proved yourself. You're only 21 years old. You played 20, 71 times for Millwall at at the age of 21. So 
this season he'll, he'll be, should be set to make 100 appearances, touch wood, as long as he doesn't uh, hurt himself. And um, f to 22 years old and to have 100 appearances in the second tier of English football already, I mean, that's that's pretty decent, isn't he? He, he does play quite well. He's, he's very good. Uh, not perfect, no, no one is, but um, very good, very good player. Um, so, moving on now to this as well. For some reason this is an exclusive, I told you about this last week, because I picked it up from Football Insider, so I don't know how it's an exclusive. I mean, does he not watch my videos? Come on. This is also from londonnewsonline.co.uk, and exclusive in air quotes Mill will have options to buy including a loan deal for Leeds United midfielder Jamie Shackleton which we knew from Football Insider 247.com uh, Mill will have negotiated an option to buy Jamie Shackleton if the Leeds United midfielder delivers during his season long loan stay in South London the Lions made the 22 year old capped three times by England at under 20 level their fifth signing of the summer transfer window Shackleton Follows centre back Charlie Cresswell and making a temporary move from United to Gower outside. But the Championship Club have structured the deal so they can make Shackleton's switch a permanent one. The Leeds Academy prospect came on in the second half of Wednesday night's pre season friendly stalemate against Swedish side Hammarby and a den. The visitors won 5 3 on penalty spot kicks. I know there is a bit of rivalry between the two clubs, but as a manager, you certainly admire the way Leeds work and play, Rout told the South London Press. Playing in front of a crowd at Ellen Road is going to stand him in good stead for playing in front of the Mill fans. We know we get players who are used to working hard and have that ethos of wanting to be better. That's also a plus for us. Uh, if we are looking to take loan players, we should be looking to take them from clubs. We feel we're going to be very similar in the way we want to play and our culture. You've got to make your, your own friends and settle yourself, but it's a lot easier there are two people from the same club or someone else you know it helps in your downtime for someone to show you around and show you the ropes Shackleton has made 78 appearances for Leeds 40 of those in the championship and 27 in the Premier League so it seems he's like um, uh, the Billy Mitchell of uh, Leeds United he featured 22 times scoring twice when Marcelo Bielsa's team won the championship title in 2020 Rowett said He's played as a holding midfielder, an advanced midfielder, as a number 10, a right wing back and a right back. His preference is to play somewhere central rather than a wing back or full back. I've got a bit of an idea where I see him featuring for us and I think it's one of those central positions in the middle of the pitch. Okay, so where does that leave everyone else? George Savile getting squeezed out? Maybe. Uh, he's coming in as more of a midfield option than a wing back option. His flexibility will be important to us. Uh, we've got some really good options over 46 games in the championship you need all of those options he's pretty versatile but his energy and ability to play in different ways he can receive balls in tight areas get out and progress the team up the pitch he can build possession a little bit he's very very mobile that means quick uh, we spoke about a little bit about this season about being able to play a bit of high tempo for longer he's got lots of good attributes Millwall are set to add to their attack before the window closes but Rowett had wanted to check on the development of the young players already on his books. Defender Alex Mitchell who spent last season with Leighton Orient looks set to head back out for game time. Tyler Burry and Isaac Aloffi could also struggle for significant minutes. They've all got lots of clubs who will want to take them on loan said Rowett. Depending what we bring in we have to look to make good decisions on trying to help them develop. Those are the kind of conversations we have all the time. Ideally, you want a young player who's done really well to see them hitting 46 games. And that's going to be a big challenge to give anyone or promise him that. Say we've got a top League One club who wants to take one of our players and play him every week. We have to consider whether that would be uh, would get them to the level we want quicker than being a bit part for us. That also coincides with wanting to strengthen in one or two areas. Uh, would that be Charlton? Uh, no, because it says top League One club, so I guess it's not Charlton. Uh, you're you're always trying to strengthen an attacking area of course if we can bring another player in of a different type in those areas then fantastic there are another couple of areas in the squad where potentially we just need a bit more balance or competition again that depends on what we, we do with some of those young players also we will play their final friendly at home to Ipswich Town tomorrow 3pm and on that note 
we move on to a preview of that game from newsatden.co.uk. Uh, preview, Millwall versus Ipswich Town, Team News and predicted 11 for final friendly match. Millwall will face one final pre-season test in the form of League One outfit Ipswich Town. Could they take some of our players on though? I don't know. With just over a week until the start of the championship campaign, the Lions will be stepping up their preparations ahead of facing Stoke City at the Den on opening day. Um, just going over old ground. Um, Ipswich will provide a different test to what the Lions have faced so far. The tra Tractor Boys are undoubtedly stronger than the likes of Dartford and Colchester. Oh shit! And Rout told News at Den that they will likely pose a similar threat to a championship level opponent. They're a good side. I know Kieran McKenna. I did my UA for pro license with him. He's a bright young manager. They'll play in a quite a technical way. They'll try to keep possession and give us one or two problems in different ways. It's just another test for us, a top end League One side. We've had some good varied challenges in terms of style of play and level of position. It'll be another one against Ipswich. It'll be pretty close to the championship game and that's the aim for it. Should be a bigger crowd as well than the Hammerby game. Good crowd there tomorrow, hopefully. It won't be a reflection on either team for where the season ends up, of course. We played them last season at their place and beat them, but they didn't really have any bearing on the season. And it'll be the same this time, whatever happens. But it'll be a good game for us, a good test, and it'll give us a bit of an idea of some of the challenges, some of the good things we've got going on with our squad at the moment. Ipswich will be gunning for automatic promotion. I don't care, blah, blah, blah. Um... Despite being Mill's last friendly match the preseason route indicated that the team he chooses to start against Ipswich will not necessarily be the same one that faces Stoke next weekend. Yes, don't give your game away. Don't give it away. I think we're just trying to learn little things and have an idea of what we might look to play against Stoke. You play one team, one player doesn't do very well, someone comes off the, in the bench and does really well, and it gives you food for thought. We know our squad, we know the options that we have for Stoke, we'll try to pick those options wisely for the right game, but we need every player to be motivated and ready to play their part. Of course, only 11 can start in the first game, and I certainly wouldn't say that whatever team starts against Ipswich will definitely start against Stoke. However, it is likely that the Lions will choose a similar side to the one that faced Hammerby in midweek, with that being near to the strongest lineup that Rowett can build. Cresswell could be brought uh, back into the team after being benched for the first half on Wednesday evening, but it remains to be seen as to who drops out of that if it does happen. Uh, probably Cooper, because he's on the fucking Terminator mission to fucking smash everyone up in pre season. And. It, He'd probably injure himself if he carries on like that. A fellow Leeds loanee Shackleton might be given his first start, although the Lions may opt to play Billy Mitchell instead after he was arrested in Mill's last match. Um, indeed. So they say uh, the possible Millwall eleven is Bart Bukowski, McNamara, Cresswell, Hutchinson, Cooper, Malone, Honeyman. Billy Mitchell, Fleming, Bradshaw and a phobie. What I do think will happen, I don't think we'll have an extended squad. I think it's, they're going to try to play under league rules as close as possible. I think we're going to have um, 18 players. Is it 18 players? Yeah, it's 7 subs. 11 um, starting. And we're going to have 5 substitutes. I don't think... For the last couple of games, they had 2 goalkeepers on the bench. Fuck knows why he why did that. I don't know what's going on. Um, but we will see. Um, so, I think we're going to have 11 and plus 7, and we're going to have a proper team. Um, would Biakowski play? I know he, um, he used to play for Ipswich, so I imagine he wants to, to, to play some part in that game, but to be honest with you, do you really want to get him injured? Um, not really. What they might do is play him. Um, I would. What I would do is I would probably start him, and then take him off at half time, and get, give Long a go um, against a decent team. He did all right against Colchester. Made a fantastic double save, point blank. It's pretty good. Let's see if he can do that against Ipswich. And um, yeah, and then the only other thing is up front. I think the middle is pretty good. The wings are alright. 
know what you're going to get. Um, just up front, it's not really, they're not really gellings, but again, do you want to keep fucking around with up front? That's probably why they're not gelling. You, we know a Phobie's going to play, he's the main man. Fleming is, is a big man, he's the, the, the record signing now. You would imagine he's got to play, but um, they do, they, they are playing pretty narrow. I see in one of the games, is it Colchester game? There was a lot of space on the right in front of, in front of Danny McNamara and no one was going down there. Because I think everyone wants to play in the middle. Like, well, play with the fucking spaces. Get Fleming out right, out, out on the right. Get him in the space. He can do do it where he needs to do it. Don't If he's not working in the middle, bring him out on the, on the, on the wing. If he doesn't want to play there, like, just try and get him to do it and see how it works. And then if he's... If he's producing, and you know, I'm sure he's going to be happy about that, whether he's scoring or setting up goals. But let's just um, see what we get. Should be a fair few Mill fans there tomorrow. Um, moving on now to this. Now, obviously, I don't know if you know or you don't know, but Mill are not doing any match programs from now on. They will not be doing a printed program. So here's the thing. There are things in a program that are match specific, such as the one you're seeing on your screen now. So what happens to that? What's happening with that? Well, obviously, but are they going to be putting them all online? So we've got the match mascot here. You usually get this in the program. There's a picture. This is the mascot. They usually do too. This is the the mascot that paid to be a mascot, and then this is the one that we um, pulled out of the draw for the Junior Alliance mascot. Then you also have the chairman's note. The chairman writes a few words. Uh, either uh, Berison or Kavanaugh. They have their notes at the front, front of the program. And then the manager as well. So, but what usually happens with that is the person who, who writes, the, make, writes the program, they call them up, have a word with them. Or do you, like, it's kind of dictated, semi dictated. And then they type it up. And then they send it to him, is this all right? Can we put this in the program? And then it done like done like that. Garout's not sitting there typing up uh, his comments and then sending it off to the publisher. It doesn't happen like that. So is that going to happen now? Gar will Garout's pre-match words, will they be put on the Mill website? Will they be put on Twitter? Will they just get knocked on the head? We don't know. It's uh, We're entering a new era now where there is not going to be... Uh, there's not going to be an official match day program. There will be a match day program. And we're going to get into that next. But I'm just going to say. So we've got stuff like this. Saturday's Millwall mascot. Patrick uh, Loftus. Uh, Millwall Football Club's official ma match day mascot. Uh, he's 13 years old. He attends Langley Park School for Boys. His favourite player is Daniel McNamara. Understandable. He's very good. And his hobbies include gaming and playing football. Fortnite. Does he play Fortnite? Um... Patrick currently plays his football with Old Wissonian. He seems a bit young to be playing for Old Wissonians in the Kent Youth League. He trains midweek with Unique Football Academy. Oh, okay. So he's, he really does want to be a football league. He's playing for extra training. So, And he trains every Friday with the Millwall Community Trust who run the Millwall Player Performance Pathway Scheme. So he's, he's being... Uh, they're not messing around. He's getting extra training. He plays for a club, and he he's got uh he's trained for an academy as well. So, and now he's going to be a mascot, and he's going to be uh kicking the ball around on the pitch. Could could we be seeing him in uh where is, how old is he now? Thirteen, maybe in five. No, probably not five. Seven years time, actually playing for Millwall. Why not? Could could be a possibility. We've had Ben Thompson. We've had Billy Mitchell. We've had Daniel McNamara. It seems they're trying everything they can do to get him uh, get him going there. So good luck to him, Patrick Loftus. But like I say, with no match programme, what happens to all the stuff that was in the match programme? Now, if you're in the executive seats, they give you a team sheet anyway. They've been doing that for years. I imagine that will continue. What about everyone else? Will you get a team sheet? Will they be putting piles of team sheets next to the food kiosks? Um... I doubt it, because have you seen the fucking price of printer ink? It's off the fucking charts. But, we have a development. So, 
there is a program for tomorrow's game. It is not an official program. It costs one pound. I imagine it's going to be very thin and slim down. Um, it's being done by volunteers who like programs and want to keep them going. This is on sale tomorrow. There's only 600 there. They're doing a test run. They want to see if they're going to sell. They're paying it for paying out of it from themselves. So and I, there's going to be very few or little to no adverts. Uh, so it's, it's, this is a tweet from Wallart at Wallart 1885. It looks like fans will be producing the program this season in light of the decision of the club to stop doing it. Only a pound, and every chance of content will be better read with less adverts. Good news. And it's a double picture because we have this is all being sorted out on Facebook, on Facebook groups, because the people who are doing it are all boomers. No offence, Chris Bethel, but he's a man of a certain age and vintage. And all those boomers, they love Facebook. Um, the millennials seem to be on Twitter, and the Zoomers seem to be on Snapchat or TikTok. So, and they're all kind of not talking to each other, because they're all on different platforms. But this is all happening on the Facebook groups. And this is what it said. Sad news is Mill will not, will not be producing a matchday programme. Good news is that the fans are producing a match day program. Mule fans have got together over the close season and worked on a no advert program with information, pictures, history, and a must have rare edition for the collection. Uh, sellers are fans, producers are fans, all volunteers, so it'd be nice as it is. So they're doing this in their spare time, and it's only a pound. So try not to chore them for change because they haven't got any change. Bring a pound if you can. Maybe put if two pounds are you pushing it. And they said, if you if you only got a fiver, buy, buy five and then hand them out. Or just let them have it, I don't know. It's, um, they've got a small print run until we find out a feet. So he's doing 600, he said he's doing 600. And he's paid for it up front out of his own money. So, and I don't know where they're going to be. Presumably they're going to be on the main gate of Amber Road. If you want one, get it. Apparently they're going to be doing, uh, maybe not for this one, but... For the Stoke one and beyond. Uh, subscriptions. And you can get it mailed to you. That's going to cost more because you're paying for the postage. That's going to cost like three quid or whatever. And this is, like I said, this is all being sorted out on Facebook. So is, is there anyone on this group, in the Facebook groups, that can put it on Twitter? Because this tweet is from the 13th of July. And this is the, the newest tweet about it. No one's tweeting about this. You've got to market it if you want to sell it. You've got to do that. Now, apparently the club have given them permission and tacit authority to sell in and around the ground. because Probably because they feel bad that they've they knocked it on the head. But then they haven't mentioned it. They haven't even told anyone that they've scrapped the program. Which is... Yeah, I imagine they don't want the backlash. They, they made the decision because they were losing a lot of money doing it. And I understand. Um, we understand. But they haven't told anyone because they don't want people moaning. Which, people are going to moan anyway. So, it would be nice if they could push this. I don't know how, how like, if they could tweet about it. Because no one's really tweeting about it. Because, like I said, all these boomers on, are sorting out on Facebook amongst themselves. So, um, if you're watching this, you probably know more than most people. Because you're well informed. Because... I'm finding all this information out and I'm I'm telling you. And I've been ranting for 43 minutes now and it, it's crazy. There's a lot going on today. Um, so yeah. No match day program, official one, none official one. I think it's just going to be the kind of the teams, the squads, the match officials. I don't know if they've I think they printed this way in advance, so hopefully they get the match officials. Um, that's usually done seven days in advance, I'm not sure. Um, but they've definitely had the squads, the match information that you see in the back in terms of the fixture list and then who played who, who played in the team, who scored and all that shit. Um, the list of Millwall players and their career history, how many games they played, how many goals they scored. In terms of um, head to head, previous games 
between the two clubs, uh, which players played for, for Millwall and which players didn't. Or no, which players played for Millwall and which players also played for the team that we're playing. That kind of thing. And we have to see we have to see what it's like. Um, but if you want if you want it, you're gonna have to support it and help them out. Um, can if you can volunteer if you want to write for it if you want to help sell it. Uh, maybe if you help sell it, you can get one uh, for yourself. Because it seems they're gonna be, this one is gonna be pretty limited. It'll be six hundred. So if you're interested in that, crack on. So. Uh, there is another game tomorrow, other than the Ipswich game, which no one is talking about. It's utterly bizarre. The only people who are mentioning it are St. Neots Town. No one else has mentioned it. It's not on any list of friendlies that are, that are going. Mill haven't mentioned it, but apparently there is a game. It's at St. Neots Town, which is right by the train station. Uh, you can get the train from London Bridge, Thameslink train, take you right up there, it costs like 20 quid. If you can't be fucked watching fucking Ipswich Town again, even though we played them last season, I mean. But, it's going to be an under 23s team, we believe. Which probably will include players that like Isaac Loffey and Topper Lodge. Because I think we're going to get the first team squad tomorrow versus Ipswich. And cash and contactless payment will be available at the turnstiles, either or whichever one you want. It's a 3 pm kickoff. Um, now, the under 23s, well, should be under 21s, we'll get to that later. But the under 23s, as I'm going to call them now until uh, the end of the thing, um, they played Chelmsford City tonight on Friday night and they lost 3 1. And this was the team, Gilmore, Muller, Walker, Penny, Grant, Alex Mitchell, Allen, Lawson, Leahy, Drozd, Boateng, and Charles A, Charles B, Charles C, and Charles D, Ockley, and Abdul Malik were the subs. And they lost 3-1. Um, it was 3-0 before they pulled the goal back. Um, the attendance was 2 5 and it was a pretty strong Chelmsford City team with a lot of experience in. They had Liam Trotter playing for them. They had Simeon Jackson. Simeon Jackson, remember him? Played for Millwall. Um, striker, most notably played for Gillingham. It's Canadian international, so... Um, pretty strong team from Chelsea City. They ended up winning 3-1. The first goal just before half-time was a bit of a calamity. I was listening to the commentary from the Chelmsford City pod. He was doing the, the match. He was doing the announcements on the Tannoy, and it was, it's amazing what you can do in the internet now. Now that is, they were doing live uh, commentary from the the Tannoy booth on, like, I think, something called Mixlr or something like that. I got the link from Chelsea City. You want like Mill Mill's Twitter didn't say fucking shit. Chelsea City's Twitter was giving you all the information, um, but yeah, apparently. The two Millwall defenders who they didn't name sort of crashed into each other, which left the geezers free to run on to go and score. And um, the rest, as they say, is history. So there you go. And apparently, Mills Twitter is saying Abdul Malik scored. It was actually a trialist. Abdul Malik had a shot on goal that the goalkeeper parried, and then the trialist backed up and put it in the net. So there you go. Mill, it seems like Mills Twitter is getting second hand information. Whereas Chelsea City giving you the uh, eyewitness account. Um, so yeah, they lost 3-1. And it, I'm saying under 23s, but there are changes afoot. What are the changes and what is afoot? For the 2022-23 Professional Development League 2 season, this is from a website called youthhawk.co.uk. They are changing it again. It used to be under 19s and under 21s. Then they changed it to under 23s and under 18s. Now they're changing it to under 18s and under 21s. Because most of the players playing for under, 20, uh, under 23s are way under 23. I think quite a few of our team are 18 years old. Um, they're literally playing up because if they're good enough, you want them playing as high up as they can get. So we're starting to see Tom Lee playing for the under-23s. 
even though he's just turned 18, I believe. So as you want to get them going as as uh, quickly as possible without endangering them up the age groups so they can play better physical players who are more skillful and test themselves against that and hopefully they'll get better. And you hear about all the time about um, the youth players training with the first team. That's for that reason. So it says here the Professional Development League 2 is under 21s football's second tier designed for those academies with category 2 status. The league is split regionally into North and South divisions with each team facing opponents in their own region twice both home and away and opponents in the other region once. The sides finishing the top two positions in both regions at the end of the season will progress to a knockout stage to determine the overall league champion. Coventry, Coventry City are defending champions. Yeah, so the first team in the north will play the second, uh, the runners up in the south, and vice versa, and the winners of that go through to the final. Now, we're waiting for the fixtures to come out, because as you've just seen, these are the teams in our, the south that we play home and away. So we're playing these teams twice. But in terms of playing these teams that are in the north, we only play them once. So it needs to be decided where is that one game going to be played. Is it going to be played at home or away? So we're still waiting for that. Now, one thing I would say, we've got three teams dropping down from Category 1 status to Category 2 because they seem to be the teams that are in financial trouble, so I don't know if that's the reason why. But those teams are Birmingham City, Burnley, and in our division, Reading. Uh, I don't know which teams, if any, have came up. Maybe Wigan. I don't think we played them last season. I'm not too sure. Peterborough as well? I'm not too sure. But, um, yeah, some, some new teams for the under-21s to be playing this season. Under-21s. Um, so, there you go. It's not under-23s anymore. It's under-21s. Which, this is um, going on in the first division as well. Premier League 2, where teams like Leeds play. Now, is this affecting... What Leeds are doing with their youngsters. Is that why Jamie Shackleton has been left go? Because he's 22. Normally they would keep the players until they're about 23. And then, okay, you're 23 now. You're too old to play in the under 23s. But you're not playing in the first team because you're not good enough. We have to move you on. Is that what's happening now earlier? Is that going to be happening earlier now? Is that going to give us a chance to get 22-year-old players from Premier League tub, uh, Premier League teams? Could that be a possibility going forward? Maybe, maybe not. Um, I'm going to finish up now. I've been going on for nearly a fucking hour. There's a lot going on today, though. We have some information about the uh, retarded industrial action taken by Aslef on the first game of the season next week against Stoke City. We now have a kind of timetable, and it's no surprise to know that South Eastern are basically... Helping the Union fuck themselves in the foot. Because they are not doing any trains, South Eastern, on Saturday the 30th. Um, yeah, you can see there's, there's a strike on 27th. But they are going to be running some trains for that. But on Saturday, they're not going to bother. Because these guys at Aslef, at the Union, are not the, not the people who voted. Like You, you have a right... To vote for strike action for for a pay rise and that I understand, but the people in charge at the top who decide when that strike is going to take place thought it would be a good idea to do it on Saturday the thirtieth, which will completely and utterly undermine their working class support, especially amongst football fans who are looking forward to uh, the first game of the season, and will now have a fucking ball late like, trying to get to that game. Um. Maybe you have to drive in now. You won't be able to have a drink. Won't that be nice? So this is what's happening. Um, um, where are we going? Saturday the 30th of July. There will be no South Eastern services running on the rail network. Do not attempt to travel by train on this day. Well, here's the thing. Why not? Why don't you uh, get a bicycle and go on the uh, the tracks? No, there are not any trains on them. No, don't do that. Do not do that. Um, but, but because they have planned engineering works... 
If you live in the Beckenham area, you will be able to get a replacement bus that will take you to Denmark Hill. And maybe you could get an overground train from Denmark Hill to Surrey Keys and walk from there. That might be a possibility. Uh, I think Southern Train should be fine. I think it's just South Eastern and some others are affected. Uh, if you coming from further afield, check your journey. Um, it says journey pl planners will be correct from the 26th. Well, that's good, isn't it? They give you three days notice. Fantastic. So yeah, um, South Eastern attempt to be uh, not putting any effort into putting any kind of service on Saturday. Because they know that this strike action is going to completely fuck up the union's chances of public support. Because if 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 there's a strike on Tuesday, it's like, oh, oh no, sorry boss, I can't make it to work, there's a train strike. I'll have to have the day off work, oh no. Oh no, It's and it's like tr fucking, everyone's an answer strikes, traffic wardens are an answer strike. I, who gives a fucking shit if traffic wardens are on fucking strike? We'll be jumping for fucking joy. Yes, don't give them any money. Don't give the traffic warnings any money. Let them strike. Let them strike as much as they want. Because nobody wants tra Nobody fucking likes traffic warnings. Let them fucking strike. Happy days. We can fucking park where you want and not get a ticket. Well, it's like literally. This is absolutely retarded. I've mentioned this before, but putting a strike on a Saturday. Messing with people's leisure time, messing, messing with the first game of the EFL season. You completely fucking retarded. <sighs> you clowns. And on that note, <laughs> thank you for watching, if you've made it this far, and goodbye.